Hello, everybody. Welcome back for Stark 2 action. We have Skillis going up against... Oh, a laser. Almost didn't even highlight his hatchery there. Now, some of you might not have even known that these players were at the ESL 2024 Spring Championship Offline Finals, whatever. Because they both played in the open bracket. And some of the players in the open bracket obviously didn't make it to the knockout bracket. And I think almost all of the open bracket matches weren't broadcasted. Some of like the last ones, the qualifying matches were. But that's about it. Skill is going for a super fast probe, Scott. He literally pulled off his probe right away. As soon as the game started to get it over here, block the natural of a laser. But a laser seems unfazed. Just goes for a hatchery first. Gas into pool. And skill is just going for a wall with a pylon in it. So probably going to be seeing a cyber core here. Is this a bait or is this baneling bustable? That is always the question. And in recent times, the question is all or the answer has always been... We are not bailing busting that stuff. It's probably a bait, and also shoe batteries are pretty good at keeping your units alive, even though there's no wall. It's not like the Legacy or uh, Heart of the Swarm Wings Liberty Times, where you needed a zealot with a sentry behind, or even a stalker, ready to force field. No, nowadays we have adepts, so we can scout more, and... We can do more creative walling shenaniganry, as in we can shade in from behind and put them in front. So if there's an adept here, you can send a secondary adept shade in and then boop, it blinks in in front of the weakened other adept. And so you can hold off a lot of zerglings with just those units and they really change that dynamic. Of course, you can still bust the Protoss with like six banes. And a bunch or eight banelings and a bunch of zerklings if they are greedy and only make one or two adepts and early on protoss don't have a lot of pylons as you can see we only see two pylons for skillless going for stargate here nothing special there no gas being bite by a laser expect a third base to go down rather soon uh that should be this drone yeah there he goes the lasers are small slowlings do Almost get in with a scout, but Skillis did block it with a pylon. Actually, I, I would kind of expect that the links might be able to go through that, but I guess a pylon and a gateway make a diagonal wall. I don't know. If you're the Zerg player, you always try, and if you're the Protoss player, you have to have the knowledge. Third base is going down before a fourth queen. Speed now finishing up, but Skillis doesn't have to commit to making a second gateway. That is interesting. So what is he thinking about now? No third base just yet. There's an Oracle now, two adepts going across the map. We're keeping an eye on the minimap. We see a Void Ray now coming out after the Oracle. I like that. I think Void Ray on this map is strong. I think Fast Bacon, Fleet Beacon is pretty strong on this map as well. Oh, look at that. These adepts, very annoying in those little corners of the minerals. And they can threaten shades in off cooldown. Now with the orc over here, zero kills, didn't kill any larva either. These adepts are just being annoying. I guess they do prevent the mining a little bit. As you can see, there's a little bit of oversaturation going on in the third base. And even the main base on that gas. Might even have been a mistake, but... Thorpe is going down for Skillis. How many units does he have on the map? Three Adepts. And... Oh, these two Adepts ended up here. We see a Twilight console. Wait, what? It's a gateway. I thought there was a Twilight. I guess, uh... I misread the production tab. Now, Twilight console and Forge coming up. So that's pretty standard progression, but we do have the two Oracle instead of three. So is this going to be Blink? It's not going to be that super stock standard Blink stalker timing with plus one and three Oracles. 
to protect them. Let's take a look at Elazer's getting that Roach Warren. He has some extra gases coming up. And he has a lair now. Or halfway done. So when the Roach Warren finishes up, he can start speed. He's getting an evolution chamber for plus one range. He's getting a fourth base. He's getting more gases. I mean, you know I'm gonna say it. What about some swarm hosts? How many queens? Only six queens. Wow, adepts did shade on in. So, skills made a couple of extra adepts. Now, holy moly, a lot of drones actually going down in the third base. More of them going into the natural. This is uh, irregular play that you don't see that often. One oracle did go down. Let's see what he lost for that. Five adepts and an oracle went down for a total of 17 drones this game. Oh my. The laser still at 68 drones though. Probably was making a lot of drones during holding off that attack. And behind it we see a Hydralisk gang coming down. Bunch of roaches. Oh my lord, we have a... What? Oh, it wasn't an accident. I was like, oh, dropper lords are coming out? We have overlord speed? Or we're gonna drop some queens and then it was a misclick. He instantaneously cancelled. We have a pylon here across the map. We have a couple stalkers. Is he gonna make a gateway here? We have plus one. We have blink. How many gateways do we have? We have seven gates. Eight one underway. Or the eighth. So that's a lot of gateways. We have plus one. We only have five gases. And Mr. Skillus is going to be making a lot of stalkers here and just attacking. He only has one oracle here, and this warp or void ray is at home. Wouldn't do much versus the queens and the hydralisk, though. Sorry, I have a lot of air right now. A couple links stream on in. One adept should deal with that, but all of the warpins are being used at the front. Decent stalker micro here. And plus one is not done yet for a laser. We do have plus one for Skillis. He's upgrading behind this. He's expanding behind this. So he is not going all in with this. But it's definitely a committed pressure so far. Oh my god. This one stalker sort of survives with two health. The links were shooed away. Or like warded off. And plus one range now does finish. And all these Hydras behind... They have range as well. Now they are dishing out the damage. Nice Ravager cocoons as well. Making sure that some of the weakened roaches do not die. But this doesn't seem like a good fight for Skillis Law any longer. Oh my god, what a stasis ward. Half the army of Elaters not fighting right now. This is the best trade that Skillis is going to get. And even though this is the best trade he's going to get, it still looks kind of iffy. Now doesn't it? More stalkers are being morphed in or warped in. And the stasis trap is about to wear off and the stalkers have to retreat. Did Skillis add any additional tech? Some of these stalkers not put into the control group just yet. Now we do get charge for the zealots. But let's look at the buildings. No, we don't have a robo. We still have this star gate. We don't have a Templar archives. Now just starting up the Templar archives. So, this big Ling Roach Hydra with some Ravagers attack is going to be running into pure Stalker and maybe some Zealots. Uh, I think Skillis does not have the units to hold this off. He was planning on doing a lot more damage with his Adepts and his subsequent Ling Stalker attack. And look at all of these Hydras just dishing out the damage. Plus two range even coming up. We do have the nuclear battery, plus two is done for Skillis, but he does not have a lot of stalkers left. Only a handful of stalkers here. The shield battery's out of juice, and these hydras are going to town. 23 probes going down, and the last remaining army of Skillis is just stuck in a corner here, trying to find a decent fight, trying to use the blink to get the value, but... I mean, a laser's not relenting. He is almost maxed out, and Skillis is dipping below 100 supply. The 
third base goes down, and I feel like Skillis is going for his last hurrah here. The Void Ray comes into the mix, but he gets mixed up himself. And Skillis GG's out. A laser takes a pretty clean victory here in game one on Oceanborn. And a laser brings us into a game number two here on El Sion after taking a pretty convincing win on game number one. Uh, I thought Skillis had a pretty interesting plan. The drone hides from the probe here and goes to the third base location. Could plan to go through to the gold. Continue its path, but no, it does not. And Skillis again doing the same thing as he did in game one. Sending out the probe right away, making sure he gets the block. And I do like the adept attack that he did. I mean, it was so off timing that I wasn't looking for it. So when the Adepts appeared into the Mineral Line, I was uh, kind of surprised. I'm uh, glad we didn't miss it. And Skillis, of course, has been on the grind for quite a bit. Both these players, I think, still on Team Liquid, so it's a team kill as well. And... I don't know, Skillis has been... Uh, visibly frustrated, or at least on Twitter, with uh, how hard he's been practicing and how... I wouldn't call them lackluster, but less than satisfying his results have been. Like, he's clearly a solid player that can take a game off everybody, if not a series. But it, uh, the, the runs haven't lined up for him yet. And it, he's just got to keep trying. At some point, he's going to get a run. He's going to get a top four, a top three. He did get a top eight recently. I don't remember the tournament. That was pretty good. But sadly, I don't remember. I'm sorry that the lore stops there. Not really a lore person. And of course, a laser. The Polish jerk that just keeps on going. Do know a little bit more lore. I think the first time I heard about him was when he got picked up by AT Gaming, I think they were called. At they? Yeah. Uh, Uthermal used to play for them as well. So I guess Ate players go to Team Liquid. That is what I've learned. Or they retire at Mouse Control. The esports retirement home. Allegedly. God, that's a, that's a Dutch in-joke for StarCraft. So sorry if that went over your head. Do see another Stargate coming out here for Skillis. Now we watched Rogue vs. Shadone previously. And they also picked El Sion as their second map. And Shidon uh, made it happen on this map. So is this a Pronos map, Skillis? Is this secretly, even though it has gold bases, even though it, have rich, it has rich geysers? Is it secretly a Protoss map? Because I would call this a Zerg map. If I, if you, if you like, were to put a gun to my head... Or you were to, like, insinuate that you would hurt my swarm hosts. I would tell you that my honest opinion is that this seems like a Zerg map to me. I, I feel like it is a Zerg map. But maybe it's only a tricky Zerg map, you know? Like the 60 drone Zergs. Maybe those thrive. Okay, double gate Twilight console coming out. So that's four gateways in total. For Skillis going for the Oracle again. Secondary Oracle as well. But not a lot of adepts this game. Actually just one. Gets a little scouting done. As we can see. And no more units from the Stargate so far. Oh, these queens were so ready. These oracles, oracles didn't even get close. Close to any workers. And Resonating Glaives does come out for Skillis. So this is going to be a pretty uh, sizable commitment. Let's see if he banks up a bunch of uh, Adepts here. I would kind of expect that. These Adepts are already trying to go into the Mineral Line. Three of them on deck. Ooh, the gold base for a laser here. Also mined out this Mineral, so an easy fifth base behind the gold. A laser is setting up for a slightly longer game, and if he gets there, it's going to be pretty nice. I don't know if Skillis wants him to get there. He's now just taking his gases. He has the four gateways. He's making a couple of depths at home. 
So, how many adepts do we have in total? Eight adepts, more of them warping in. That's a lot of glaive adepts. That is not going to be fun. Now, a bunch of drones for a laser coming out. He needs to start making some roaches, but he does not have a roach warren. What does he have? He just has links without upgrades. So he's going straight into hydralisks. Well, doesn't matter anymore. Look at that. That's a lot of adepts. That's a big amount of shades. Oh my god, he's going for a spire. I don't know where the spire is, but... Oh, there it is. Oh, that's a gumba if I've ever seen one. Laser going for a spine per base. I like that. That's a pretty good response if you don't have roaches. But the drones have to run away from these adepts infinitely or indefinitely. And we do have a decent amount of queens. Six queens on deck. The spire gets spotted as well by Skillis. The oracles get a couple drone kills as well. 15 drones and more falling. Look at that. Like the lynx can't even get the service area. And the resonating glaive adepts just murder zerglings and drones. They prefer drones, but, you know, they'll do zerglings as well. That was six, 26 drones in total dying to this assault from uh, Skillis. And, I mean, a laser. 49 drones is making more drones now. Grabbing the gold. And that can be somewhat of a safe haven. If he gets the gold up and running and keeps it for a little bit, he might be able to catch up. But, as you can see, Skillis is not relenting. He's attacking with Stalkers. He's Blink coming, plus one coming. And we see six meters on the menu. And I don't know if these Stalkers are hungry, but these meters need to, like, circumvent the army and somehow pull these Stalkers back to the natural. And get pro kills, basically. They have a lot to do, but... Skillis is just pushing... He's not letting up, and a laser here has nothing. No upgrades, just Zerglings. Couple Mutas, and I guess he's showing them now. No, he's sending them bottom. They just kind of flew by the Stalkers. And I mean, these Lings have a very tough time engaging here. The Oracles are there to just laser beam them down. The Queens are out of energy. And yes, the, the Mutas are here, but... All of the bases are about to get a cannon and a shield battery. I don't think those meters are going to do anything at all. Would be surprised if we see more than like four probe kills. Of course, we get a couple more, but still seven probe kills. Skillis is still ahead and the army supply is also starting to favor him a lot. Rerouting the spines. Could have maybe done that a little earlier. And now the links and the meters are just streaming in and getting one shot. One tabbed by the Blink Stalkers and the Blink Micro here, keeping all of these Stalkers alive. And a Stalker that has 4 HP does the same amount of damage as a Stalker that has full HP. So keeping these alive for as long as possible is paramount. And I mean, the laser just doesn't seem to have anything left here. Like, some of these mutas did some damage. We have 11 probe kills, but a laser calls GG and... I uh, can't make that more hype than it is, I think. <laughs> Skill is just... Uh, executed the game plan really well. He went for the Resonating Glaive Adepts. Did more damage than a laser can really sustain. He saw the Spire and a laser still committed to it. Um, and But he also had to defend the gold. Because the gold was the only thing really keeping him in the game. I like that a laser gambled a little bit here. If the game is a little slower or Skillis is a little bit more passive, might take a fourth, build a couple more gates before he moves out, then perhaps he can hold on to the gold or Skillis isn't across the map yet. Because remember, he moved out with like six to eight stalkers. If he had not moved out but decided to wait for like one or two more rounds of stalkers, suddenly the mutas fly into your natural and you're running around trying to catch the mutas. Meanwhile, a laser has this gold, it's already mining, he can build like two spines or have a couple more queens, invest more into drones and meters before you can move across the map, and this game just looks way different. Oh, uh, the score was wrong, because it flipped around halfway, but it's 1-1, because Skillis just kind of schlacked him back in game number two. And for game number three, three, three. Tree. 
We are here on Site Delta. And... Skillless is just doing the super early probe scout once again. We're here one to one. So... Whoever wins, wins the series goes through. And the loser drops into the lower bracket of the open bracket. If that makes sense to you. So let's see what Skillis has in store for this time. Both players showing different builds on each map and first game, uh, a laser kind of won the build order picks basically and the second game he did not because he gambled on some meta build and he got smacked in the face by the Resonating Glaives build. Now, Side Delta, again, a Zerg map, but maybe secretly a Protoss map? Because we've talked about this base a lot. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to do this. Super Zoom. Look at the left side. Look at this giant ramp. And, I mean, I guess this ramp, but look at the surface area on this side. Like... If you have a base over here and you come from the top, you basically have a lot of surface area that you need to somehow defend if you want to keep this base. So anywhere, uh, anything over four bases for Protoss seems to be kind of an asshole. Same for this base, super zoom. This doesn't look that bad, but still it's far away from this base. I guess this is somehow a little easier and then I don't know. This is just a- it's a low ground base, feels bad. And defending it is annoying as well. If your army walks over there, you can kind of get cut off or whatever. Right, it just doesn't feel good. I can't explain it. If I was Protoss, I would take this as a fifth. That's- that's basically what I'm saying. A Zerg, I don't care, because... Yeah. Honestly, you don't really. You just want... Huh, yeah. I don't really care if it's either here or here. I guess I prefer this, because I hate running around this rock in this dead space. So, because then you, like, run around there and it's hard to get there. Drops are annoying, but the same kind of goes for here between the main and that fifth. But, in all honesty, I do play Mutus a lot more in most matchups, so... Then drops are less of a problem. Oh, these are depths. Again, look at that. Skill is just abusing the fact that this natural is misplaced at the third base. I guess not misplaced, but like... What else would you call it? It's just unfortunate placement. Now, in it. That's a lot of links that a laser is making here. Or, I guess he is not, because it's only four of them. Making two more, but... He did lose six already. Wow, these are depths. Getting away with murder here, literally killing the drones, and the Oracle comes over as well. The Queens were actually attacking the Adept for a little bit, and look at the drone kills here. Seven drone kills for two Adepts and seven Links. Not insignificant. Eleven Links now on the map, so that's all not drones. This feels awkward for a laser. Look at his drone count. 31. It's not, not great. He's not dead in the water just yet, but he's definitely not happy. The Polish Gambit not paying off, or maybe it did pay off. Depending on how you look at it. He still hasn't built any spores. Oh, now he builds them. That kind of feels like admitting defeat, right? Like, if you're if you're gonna go for the Polish Gambit, I kind of feel like you should keep... Keep Gambit... Get, keep the Gambit up, you know? It's uh, same in chess. If you go for a peace sacrifice... And you didn't get what you want, you should probably just sacrifice another piece. Go out swinging, you know? I feel like if you go for the Polish Gambit with the Queens, you should just kind of not make this poor and use that money to replenish your drone count. But now we see him going for extra drones and spores. So potentially vulnerable to an early attack. What does Skills think about that? He is making two more gates and Blink. Blink's getting chrono boosted. The third base is up and running and we do have four gases. 
which would make me assume that Skittles would want to tech more, but actually throws down two more gateways. And that means that we are going to be seeing a good amount of gateway units, perhaps. Four gateways on the map, two more underway. And pro production also halted. That's, uh, maybe that's just a mistake, but... Oh, he's supply blocked. <laughs> okay. That happens to the best of us. Oh, what is this? A laser doesn't know, but we certainly know that. Oh, a laser is a proxy base. Uh, Skills has a proxy gateway and stalkers being created once again. No plus one, mind you. No plus one on these stalkers. And Skillers is just going for a similar thing to game number one, where he... He did get plus one with that, so this seems a little bit more all-in. What is going on in the natural? The Lings actually got in. This is disastrous, actually. Skillus, what happened, dude? The Stalkers are here just eating all of the Zergling shots, and the Zerglings are killing all of the pylons in his base, just killing the batteries, killing the probes. So this is basically all the army that Skillus has. Dude, he got completely destroyed by one run by. He's losing all of his probes, and this is his entire army. He can't make more because all of his gateways are unpowered, and he needs to warp in at home, so these stalkers are gonna go down to pure Ling Queen without upgrades. Oh, that feels bad. That is... Ugh. Ugh. This is not, not great. Targeting some queens here. I don't know. Should he have targeted the drones instead? I don't know, but... Oh, there are the oracles to protect the stalkers that are no longer alive. 29 probes go down. Oh, that must be that sinking heart feeling. Do have 42 drones to 39 probes, so it's not as bad as I thought. And Skillis might think in his heart of hearts, does he know? More Zerglings are running in. We're going to keep an eye on this wall this time around. Now, we do have a Zealot. Can the Zealot be convinced. No, he gets put on hold position. The probes at the third do go down. And these stalkers now in a rock and a hard place, or in between a hard place and a rock? Well, that's the rock at least. These stalkers have to decide, do we go attack or do we go home protect the third base? They kind of decided neither. And now they are just trading out, but I feel like that's is starting to favor a laser a lot. Plus one melee is on the field and these oracles haven't been there with the stalkers for any amount of time which makes this stalker attack into pure ling a lot less potent and now the oracles are finally here but they barely have any energy um oh he tries to blink over this zerglings trying to get a good position here it could be a lot worse the surface area some of these stalkers behind it that is a nice repositioning blink Look at the poor surface area that these circlings are getting now, blinking down with the head healthy stalker. And the stalker's still getting some value here, but skill is completely stuck in two base. 38 workers left, so lost a couple too many probes there. Trying to go out to his third base or trying to get back to his natural. And a laser's kind of getting away with the literal murder of Skillus here. Because Skillus just kind of got caught with his pants down and uh i mean he got pegged and he did not give consent just catch a couple zerglings but he needs to catch a whole lot of zerglings on move command to make up for the deficit that he now is experiencing 38 probes he's not remaking any probes he is all in with his stalker force here and does he know about the hidden base no he does not he doesn't know about the four bases, but it's actually, in actuality, five bases. And it's all minerals here. He literally has one gas going. And that's it. He doesn't have anything. He's just going for roach upgrades and roach speed. Still off of one gas. Stalkers. Oh no, the stalkers are getting surrounded. And again, the one blink is not enough to get away from 
this mass plus one zergling army. The oracles are out of energy. And Skillis has to tap out. GG. Did he end up seeing the hidden base? No, he did not. Didn't get a glimpse of it. So maybe in the replay he will see how thoroughly he got got. If you can say it like that. Oh, also taking the other corner base. Dude, Elazer has been playing some SC Evo. Trying to play Brood War Zerg. Putting... You get just, just getting the corner bases. Abusing the fact that it's very hard for Protoss to attack one. Uh, or attack both. That's the hard part. You can attack one. That's fine. Then the drones just run away. And you probably get attacked at your third or your fourth or your natural. And if you split your army one way and the other way, then the Zerg just consolidates his army and defends one and crushes your half your army. But yeah, wow. Two to one for a laser, and I feel like much deserved. This was a blowout. Every game was kind of a blowout. Uh, I feel like. And I wanted to to see how skills did in the open bracket because we did not see him uh, go super deep in the tournament, uh, unfortunately, because he's like one of those guys that can, he can do it at some point. It just needs to click for him. But a laser, at this point, he's a veteran. Did take it 2-1 to one here. Making his teammate and fellow... Well, yeah, his fellow teammate and European Protoss player. Uh, giving him a difficult life here. Because now he needs to go through the lower bracket in an attempt to still get out of uh, the open bracket. Enough rambling, guys. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, yada, yada, yada. I really do appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.